Hi everyone, Happy New Year's 2021 already, can you believe it? Well I hope you've had a good Christmas time, a chance to unwind and relax a little bit. I've enjoyed the odd one or two chocolate Brazil nuts. In fact, I have eaten quite a few more than that. I could get Brazilian citizenship of eating so many. But one thing I have found during the course of Christmas time is once like relaxing, sitting down, having a bit of a read, I found some very um, encouraging verses in chapter 6 of Hebrews in the New Testament. And here we read and hear about how God promised Abraham many descendants. And uh, Abraham was a person known for his faithfulness in God. And uh, during the course of time, Abraham had patience and he waited upon God and for his promise to be fulfilled. And it did happen. And uh, the Bible talks about how we can put our trust in God and we can put our hope in him as well. And when we're at that stage of life where we trust God and you know, look to him for our daily um, bread and our daily requirements, we find that God brings peace and hope and encouragement into our lives. In fact, in Hebrews 6, it talks about how when we trust God and put our hope in him, it is like an anchor to our soul. And of course, in the natural and in the real world, an anchor is there to hold a vessel in place. When a strong current or a wind is upon the vessel, the anchor keeps the vessel from drifting. And we can take this as an encouragement today that as we put our hope and trust in God, that God's promises, that God's truth, that God's love will hold our souls in place. He will keep us secure and safe in his um, presence. So today I just want to encourage us as we kind of have our first meeting of the new year that we can trust in God and that is a great way to start this new year. So I'm just going to pray before we go into a little bit of time of worship. Let's close our eyes, let's take a few moments. Yes Lord, we thank you that by trusting in you and putting our hope in you, it is like an anchor to our soul. That when we face different challenges and situations in life, the underlying thing is that you are with us. That we can find peace and hope in any situation that is upon us. In difficult times, in times of ill health or grief or difficulty, we can still find your voice and your love in our lives. That we can still put our hope in you for our futures. And that we know that tomorrow will be one that we can um, face with you in the midst of it all. So Lord, we thank you for 2021, for the year ahead. We pray right now, today, as we have this first meeting together in 2021, that we can start it off by remembering your love and your compassion. So we thank you, Lord. I pray that you would be an anchor to our souls this year. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Great. So we're going to take a few moments now and Beth is going to lead us through a little bit of worship. So Beth, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a lovely Christmas and a great new year. It is so good to be with you to go into a time of worship together this morning. And as we worship this morning, let's have fresh eyes and a fresh heart for the words that we are singing and declaring into this new year together. And boys and girls, remember that you can join in with us too. You might even want to grab your favourite cuddly toy to join in with the worship. So as we're all getting ready, I'm just going to pray for us. So yeah, Father God, I thank you that we are able to worship together this morning. I thank you for your love and your peace during the season. And I just pray that you will open our hearts to receive from you during the worship. Amen. Lovely. So our first song is going to be, O oh, Come All Ye Faithful.
is worthy of our praise this morning. And whatever season we may be in, we can rely on God to save us with his hope and his love. And Jesus is our peace and our comforter in this season. And in Philippians 4, 6 to 7, it says this. Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let petitions and praises shape your worries into prayer. Letting God know your concerns. And before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness. Everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the centre of your life. And I love this verse. And as we continue to worship, let's praise Jesus for all that he has done, he is doing, and for who he is and the hope and the love that he brings us. I raise a hallelujah In the presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah
Jesus. We thank you for the love, the peace and the hope that you've given us in this season. I thank you that you are steadfast, that nothing compares to you, God. And I pray that you continue to pour out your hope in this season. Amen. Lovely. Thank you, guys. Back to you, Adam. Great time of worship. Thanks for that, Beth. Let's pray for a moment. Yes, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have for our lives. And today, again, we remember your love for us. And we ask again, Lord, that you would fill our lives, our experience of the day to day, and fill it full of your love and compassion in our friendships, in our relationships, in the things that we're involved in. Pray that you'd help us to see the world and to see the day through your eyes, your eyes of compassion and your eyes of love as well. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Great. Thanks for that, Beth. So um, there's a few announcements for today then. And first of all, at um, three o'clock, and it can be found on the uh, Cornerstone website under the kids section, Matthew and Beth have a new assembly that will be there for kids of all ages to have a look at. And this will then be followed for by um, a Zoom with Rachel Leach for ages three to six. So for those interested in that, please do text Rachel and get in touch with her for the Zoom code. So that's three o'clock this afternoon. Brilliant. So the second notice is just to say thank you really for the generous donations um, everyone has been involved in giving towards the um, treat boxes for Christmas with for local families in the area. So I want to say a, a massive thank you to you for your generosity and it has made such a difference to those local families in the area who um, may not have access to um, having these kind of items for Christmas. So thank you for those treat boxes. Those treat boxes have included things like chocolates and you know nice fruit uh, juices and you know, biscuits and crisps and all these nice like, like treats that we like to enjoy over Christmas time. So thank you everyone for being generous. And whilst going down there just a few um, days before Christmas, the staff down in the local food chair centre were so blown away really by the generosity and kindness of um, the church congregation. So thank you very much for that. It makes such a huge difference to um, those local families who have really enjoyed those treat boxes. So thank you everyone. And also there was, um, we collected so many actually that we were able to give to another local community as well, uh, another food bank. And they again were, were blown away by the, the kindness. So thank you everyone. And what has been amazing as well is just, um, just before Christmas, HDB's Love Christmas Project actually match funded um, what we did as a church. So there was another amount uh, given so that we could provide more um, food boxes to local families as well. And um, some of the church congregation here have been working busily um, just before the Christmas period and in these recent days to provide another at least 45 food boxes so thank you everyone for that kindness and generosity and if anyone does want to continue to give into the food share project and support that financially then please feel free to do that it can be found on the constant website under the giving section and the food share and any donation is gratefully received um, by us and by those local families who um, have been gratefully accepting of those things so thank you ever so much everyone that's fantastic the next notice as well then uh, to do with giving is for, for those who don't have the chance to give through you know through a basket on a sunday morning now that everything is online that uh, there is the giving tab on the website which i just mentioned but that is um you know for your tithes and your offerings and for gifts you'd like to give generally uh, towards the church and the work that we're doing uh, in the area and as a church so if you'd like to do that please feel free to do that as well thank you and finally if you've been enjoying our christmas services and would like to find out a little bit more about faith and who jesus is then please do register your interest um, on our website um, under alpha and um, chloe or one of the alpha team will be in touch regarding the start date of the next course for alpha so if you'd like to do that that would be fantastic it would be great to hear from you 
So now we got a kid spot with Tammy, Tom, and Chicky. Take it away, guys. Boys, boys, get a grip. Get a grip. Calm down. I don't think there's anything actually in the set. Oh, hello. Hi, boys and girls. Hope you had a good Christmas. Okay, Chicky, take a deep breath. It's fine. I don't think the boys and girls are going to be having chicken dinner because they're still full up from their selection boxes from Christmas. Oh, does that make you feel better? Yeah. Take a deep breath. And another one. Feeling better. Anyway, how did your Christmas go? Oh, you played lots of games. And with your new toys, it was brilliant. And how about you and Beaky Beak Beak? How did you get on? <coughs> you, you had a few minor squabbles and one major one over who was going to be the angel at the top of the tree. Wow. You said you thought the role was perfect for you. And Beaky Beak Beak disagreed and said he thought that he would stand out better. And then you had a little tussle at the top of the tree and it didn't, okay, calm, it didn't end well. Oh dear. Oh dear. But the good news is that once you both realised that the job involved being up the tree for the whole of Christmas, neither of you wanted to do it anyway. Ah, oh, well that makes sense. Well, I think it might be time for a story. And in this story, there are two brothers who don't always see eye to eye. It was late at night and all the sheep were in their beds and fast asleep, but wide awake, glaring at each other across the flock, were the brothers Jed and Roy McCoy. If you asked Jed what the problem was, he would say that ratbag Roy keeps rustling my sheep. Why, just the other day, 25 years ago, he stole my prize ewe. I didn't see him, but the wolf footprints were a dead giveaway. Only Roy would be sneaky enough to wear wolf footprint shoes to cover his tracks. So fair's fair, I put my brand on some of his sheep. I put rocks in his wool bale. If you asked Roy what the problem was, he would say, that swamp snake Jed keeps frizzling my sheep. Why? Just the other day, 22 years, three months and four days ago, he frizzled my best ram. I knew it was Jed. Who else would sneak out in a thunderstorm and frizzle a ram to make it look like it was struck by lightning? So fair's fair. I snapped his staff in two and put a scorpion in his bed. I couldn't find a snake. Once a year at the big feast, the feuding brothers would put aside their differences, sit at the dinner table and exchange gifts. But the next night, things would be back to normal. Jed and Roy McCoy glaring at each other back across the sheep. One night, an angel suddenly appeared. Surprise, said the angel. I have a good news. In Bethlehem, a baby has been born who will bring peace on earth. Peace on earth. Jed and Roy were so excited, they ran all the way to Bethlehem. There in a the manger, they found the baby. They were filled with joy. Wow, peace on earth. Then Jed and Roy looked at each other across the manger. Peace on earth. What would this baby have to do to bring peace on earth? The brothers ran home rejoicing. Funny thing, from that day on, Jed never mentioned stolen ewes or Roy frizzled rams. And that night, Jed and Roy McCoy no longer glared at each other across the flock. Instead, one would sleep while the other looked after the sheep. Did you spot that the baby was God's son Jesus who grew up and died on a cross and came alive again to make a way for us to be friends of God? How brilliant is that? And just like the shepherds, we can come to Jesus just as we are, no matter how we feel or what we've done. And he always wants to be our friend. Well, that's brilliant. Great. Let's pray. Beats together, eyes closed. <coughs> Okay, God, thank you that you sent your son Jesus at Christmas to make a way for us to be friends with you because you love us so much. Amen. Well, I think it might be time to go now and um, the animals are having a little bit of a rest and I've done my hair so I, I don't want to wake them and and by the way, Tom, your hair is looking lovely today. Thank you very much. Should you make a little extra effort this morning? I might have. Wow, great. Anyway, we're going to go go now. So, really nice to see you, boys and girls. Bye. 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 <laughs> Thanks for the kids' spot, guys. Tammy, Tom, and Chicky appreciate it. We enjoyed that so much. I've been loving it.
So next we got Chan doing our next talk of the Christmas series regarding the shepherd. So it'd be good to hear from Shan what she has for us. Thanks, Shan. Well, good morning, everybody, and a happy new year. And I really hope and pray that this year, 1921 is, no, 2021, is going to be much better than last year. So I hope you've all had a nice Christmas, as nice as can possibly be, as it was very different this year. And so we look ahead to this new year with great anticipation, with the vaccine on its way, and hopefully our lives can become a little bit more normalised. And we are certainly going to be partying big time next year. Lots of gatherings, lots of friends, making the most of the people we love around us. And hopefully we're going to have a great Christmas next year and a great year ahead. So I hope you did have some nice presents Christmas time. I certainly had a lovely present. Would you like to see it? Well, here it is. This is my vintage milk urn. A very nice gift for my lovely husband, Adam Day. Just what I always wanted. All I need now is a couple of cows to go with it and I'll be just right. Oh, it's so heavy. <laughs> oh, how to puff. Okay, so today we're continuing with our series on Advent and we're going to be looking at the shepherds. And so if you would like to turn with me or just read the verses on the screen, this story is found in Luke chapter 2 and we're going to be reading verses 8 to 20. There were shepherds living out in the fields nearby and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel of the Lord said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you and you will find him, a baby lying in a manger wrapped in cloths. And suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on peace on earth peace to men on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. And so they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. And when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told about this child and all who heard it were amazed. Wow, 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 what an amazing story. I mean, when you think about it, these shepherds had probably been busy all day. They had just drunk their cocoa and were about to go to sleep. They had made sure that all the sheep were safely in their pen. And all of a sudden, something more extraordinary and more dazzling than the northern lights was about to happen and appear above them in the sky. And so we see an angel from God appearing to these humble shepherds. I mean, what a privilege to be the first people to hear this news that God, the creator of heaven and earth, had sent his one and only son into this world who was going to be the Messiah, which the Jews had waited centuries for. And this man was going to actually like rescue the people and be the kind of a weighted one who was going to sort all their problems out and save them from all their sins and give them an amazing place in heaven. And as we know, the Jews rejected Jesus, but Jesus came for the whole world. And the amazing thing about this story to me is that God chose these humble, ordinary shepherds to be the first people to hear this news. And so it was like they were privileged guests on an honorary guest list that night they had been kind of like given tickets to the best show on earth better than any front row seat or royal box seat and wow what an amazing experience this must have been and it was fitting really that God chose these humble shepherds to be the first people to hear the news that his son had been born and as we know, Jesus later on in his life and ministry and teaching often spoke about sheep and shepherds and agriculture because that was the normal stuff that was going around people's lives during that time. 
And so we know Jesus referred to himself as being the good shepherd. And he talked about flocks and like we as people, as humans, were like sheep. And so shepherding was prolifically used in his teachings. And he was called the Lamb of God. So the shepherds really were top of the guest list for this most important event in history. And as we know, angels don't normally appear in the sky at night and have a conversation with a human being. But here, this is exactly what happened. And this was to announce the birth of the king that had been centuries in arriving. And as if that wasn't enough, a vast host of angels then joined that first angel and they all began to praise God together. These shepherds must have been absolutely flabbergasted. They must have thought, what on earth was in that cocoa we drank last night? And so what a privilege to be the first people to hear this wonderful news that the Messiah had been born. And so then they ran to see if what had been said to them was true and they found it just as the angel said. So the greatest event in history had just occurred. The Messiah had been born and for ages, literally, the Jews had waited for this. And when it finally occurred, the announcement came to these humble guys in the field watching over their sheep. And the good thing is about Jesus, the good news about Jesus, is that he came for all, the down to earth and the ordinary, and for the most esteemed monarchs in the world and every one of us in between. And I loved hearing our very own Queen on Christmas Day give her address to the world and to our nation. And her opening sentence was that Jesus was the light of the world and how light brings hope and how the teachings of Jesus had served her in her own life and given her life's purpose and caused her to worship God. And I thought that was fantastic. So whoever we are and whatever we do, we can have Jesus in our lives. We really don't need any extra special or, or extraordinary qualifications. He accepts us whoever we are and as we are. And that is good news. The amazing thing is that God uses the ordinary things in our lives for extraordinary purposes. Let's have a look at some of the other famous shepherds in the Bible this morning and let's glean some things from their stories that we can encourage ourselves with as we go into this new year ahead. And so when we consider the life of Moses, when he had fled Egypt, he was working for his father-in-law Jethro, who was like a nomad. And so they would move along and have cattle and build tents. And so a lot of jo um, Moses' his work at this time would have entailed shepherding. And in Exodus, during his encounter with God, where he was going to be like sent back to Egypt with a message to Pharaoh about letting God's people go who were under terrible slavery and tyranny there. And we see Moses having his meltdown of like, oh, pick somebody else. Why me? I can't do this. I fumble my words. Why can't somebody else do it? And we read here that God said to him, what is in your hand, Moses? And Moses replied, a staff. So what was this staff? And so when he threw this wooden stick or his shepherding stick or his staff down onto the ground, as we know, it turned into a snake and then it turned back into a wooden shepherding staff again. And so God was showing Moses that he would teach him and he would be with him. And it was God's power that would deliver his people from the grip of Egypt. He said, I will help you speak and I will teach you what to do. Take this staff in your hand so that you can perform miraculous signs with it. And so a shepherd's staff was just a stick. It was a typically three to six foot wooden rod with a curved hook on the top, a little bit like little bow peeps, I suppose, without the pink pretty bow. And the shepherd would use it for lots of things. He'd use it for walking and steadying himself. He'd obviously use it for guiding his sheep and, you know, pulling them in when they were sort of going off in different directions. He would obviously use it for killing snakes and warding off predators and many other tasks like maybe getting the juiciest figs down from the top of the tree perhaps where he couldn't quite reach and so it was an ordinary stick 
but yet it was just a stick but God used the simple shepherd's staff Moses carried as a sign to teach him an important lesson and God takes joy in using the ordinary things in our lives to perform extraordinary things in other people's lives and for extraordinary purposes what are some of the ordinary things in your life what are some of the ordinary things in our lives this morning that we just think are ordinary but actually God can use these ordinary things and us ordinary people for extraordinary things and purposes it may be your voice, it may be a pen, it may be a paintbrush, it may be a phone, a camera, a keypad, it may be your sense of humour, it may be a hammer, it may be a broom. While it is easy to assume God can only use special gifts or what we would say special people or people with special skills and special talents, we mustn't hinder his use of the everyday contributions that we make. Little did Moses imagine the power that that wooden stick, that wooden staff, that shepherd's staff would wield when it was kind of used by the power of God. And it became the staff of God, not just an ordinary stick. So let's think of some examples of ordinary things and how these ordinary things in people's lives can have extraordinary purposes. Well, when we think of our very own Julian Richards, the leader of our church here in Swansea Cornerstone, who would have thought that his voice, even after being under terrible attack several years ago now, would become a voice to our nation and beyond? His ordinary voice, an ordinary voice of an ordinary person who God raised up and used those ordinary things in his lives, in his life, to speak and encourage churches and leaders across our land and beyond, to encourage people to lead and to serve their communities and to rise up and send people out for mission and to make a difference in their communities. And this has been amazing and we have seen the uh, effects of Julian's voice that it has had in our nation through New Wine Cymru and Gwaini and encouraging and befriending and getting alongside sometimes, you know, leaders that just need a bit of help and a bit of love and a bit of care and a bit of encouragement and sometimes a bit of challenge. And so that is an amazing thing. And God has used Julian's voice, an ordinary thing. And those of us with penship and creative flair, who would have thought all of that reading as a child or all of that sticking and gluing and painting and making a mess in your parents' kitchen? Who would have thought that later on in life some of these ordinary things would be put to good use in God's kingdom and have extraordinary impact on people's lives around you? Maybe it's the written word or song or creative arts that we would think are just ordinary things in our lives. For example, there is always somebody's Christmas cards and birthday cards that I always look forward to receiving. Because I know in a paragraph or two, there is such depth of wording and lovely things that they say about me or to me. Or they will take a, a verse of scripture and they will have prayed about it and they will pen it into a card or send a WhatsApp message or even a text these days where you just feel... God has used their words and used their knowledge of scripture or used their creative penship skills to really speak into my life and to encourage me and to just make me feel really great. And that is an ordinary thing, but it has an extraordinary impact on those people who receive these things. Okay, ordinary things can have extraordinary effects on people's lives. Unlike the cards I send, which are normally Happy Christmas from Sean or Happy Birthday, hope you have a lovely day, love Sean. And, and that's all very nice and good. But there are sometimes there's cards that I keep because they have just said some lovely things. I'm sure we can all relate to that. Okay, people who like tech and programming and all sorts of technologically things, you know, things that um, they just seem to 
find ordinary. They can take to things and they just know how to do things. They know which buttons to press. They know which leads to attach. They know what lead to plug into which bit on a computer and how things can be programmed and edited. And I consider these things really hard and not an ordinary thing for me. But for some people, these are amazing gifts and talents that they have because they just seem to be able to adapt and take and learn these things really easily. And these people really have made our current season more manageable. And really, these people with these gifts have actually created lifelines for people. People who would perhaps not be able to engage on a Sunday morning. People who wouldn't be able to normally work an iPad or even a phone and text and WhatsApp or Zoom a friend or a family member. And I'm so grateful for just, even just the people that we have in our church who were listening this morning and who have even made this service online possible. Ordinary things have had extraordinary impacts in people's lives lives by using their time and their skills to help us get online which really has been amazing and when we consider some of the ordinary things we do shopping for neighbours running errands for those in need making meals for others all ordinary things which can mean the world to others a zoom a phone call a text people who can build and fix things these people are amazing to me. People who enjoy working with tools and mechanics, how all of that tinkering and putting things back together, pulling things apart and working out how things function and work by sticking back together and even improving sometimes. These practical acts can then be used later on in life for acts of service in God's kingdom and to bring encouragement and uh, you know, a real timely um, help to those in need. And another famous shepherd we're going to look at today is, of course, King David. And we're going to see how God used this ordinary shepherd boy for extraordinary things later on in his life. We first see David as a young boy looking after his father's sheep. And God brought this young David from tending sheep to be the shepherd or leader of his people. And it says in Psalm 78, 70 to 72, he chose David, his servant, and he took him from, brought him to be the shepherd of his people, Jacob of Israel, his inheritance. And David shepherded them with integrity of heart and with skillful hands he led them. Now, although David had been on the throne when this psalm was written, he is called a shepherd and not a king. And as we know, shepherding, which was a, a common profession in biblical times, was a highly responsible job. The flocks were completely dependent upon the shepherd for guidance, sustenance, provision, food and for protection. And so for David, having spent his early years on it as a shepherd, this really was like his training ground for the future responsibilities that God would have in store for him. When he was ready, God took him from caring for sheep to caring for a nation. And this really does teach us not to treat our present situations lightly or irresponsibly irresponsibly as it may just be the training ground that we are in right now for something amazing and spectacular later on in our lives and in our futures. It also teaches us to expose children to lots of different experiences the outdoors, nature, crafts, seeing the big wild world around them and how amazing God is as our creator. Kids are like sponges. They really soak things up, especially in their formative years. We didn't have much as kids and I always remember being outdoors and some of my happiest childhood memories were of being in the garden with my grandfather and picking peas and eating them like sweets. One of my cherished memories is of being in the kitchen with my grandmother rolling dough and kneading dough and walking to the local baker's shop was like an adventure and buying the bread that had just freshly been baked and come out of the oven and by the time I'd walked from the baker's to our home which was only five minutes away a big corner of the loaf had been nibbled because it was so irresistible and so delicious and all crusty on the outside and soft and fluffy in the inside and so some of these childhood memories and some of these childhood experiences can really shape and 
you know, we can use these things later on in our future sometimes. And so I want to encourage you to garden and cook and make things, invent games, fix things up, go for walks, collect shelves, leaves and pine cones, as I know we're all doing. We're all trying to be creative, especially in the season we've been in, because children are like sponges and you never know. The things that kind of children get into as a child really can develop into something great for their future. And so... In Bible times, sheep were a valuable commodity. They were used for food and clothing and sacrifice. They were often traded for other goods and services. And in Isaiah 53, we read of the man of sorrows, a suffering servant, as we know, a lamb was offered as a sacrifice to atone for people's sins, that bad stuff that we all do. But how could an Old Testament person understand the idea of Jesus dying for our sins? It's as if God was pulling back the curtain of time and allowing Isaiah to have a glimpse ahead that this little baby born in a manger would be the suffering servant, would live a perfect holy life and would die for the sins of the people, of all humankind, you and me. The future Messiah and the resulting forgiveness and restoration made available to all humankind because of the birth of this beautiful little baby in a manger that the shepherds had been given the privilege of hearing about being the first people on earth to know. So Isaiah speaks of the people of Israel straying away from God like wandering sheep and yet we know God sent Jesus, his one and only son, led like a lamb to the slaughter, to once and for all be the ultimate sacrifice for the things that we do wrong, to bring us into relationship and friendship with God so that we can have a fresh start here on earth and follow and live for Jesus with him living in us by his Holy Spirit, being brought back into the fold, so to speak, into the family of God. And so have you given your life to Jesus, the Good Shepherd? Have you responded to this wonderful Christmas story by believing in who Jesus is and saying sorry for those things that you have said, done and thought wrong that were not good? Or are you still like a wandering sheep? In at night, sheep were gathered together into a pen to protect them from thieves and bad weather or worse wild animals. The sheep pens would have been caves or they would have been um, fields and with like uh, stones built around them to perform to form like a protective wall or big branches. And so the shepherd often slept inside the pen to protect the sheep. Just as a pen, um, just as a shepherd cares for his sheep, so Jesus cares for us, his sheep. And so Jesus cares for us. The shepherd functioned as a gate, letting the sheep in and protecting them. And Jesus is that gate to God, to salvation. And some people can't get their heads around this. The fact that Jesus is the one and only way to God, to heaven. Many people try other ways or kind of customise their own route to heaven. Oh, I'll be really, really, really good. Oh, I'm not a bad person. Or I'll work my way to heaven and I'll prove to God by works that I can be good and I'll do good for him here on this earth. But life in Jesus is lived on a higher plane because of the overwhelming love, grace and forgiveness and guidance and the ultimate sacrifice that Jesus was. We come as we are, just like that sheep. We just come humbly to him to receive his grace and mercy and forgiveness into our lives. Eternal life is eternal, yet it starts immediately here. A shepherd cares for his sheep out of love. He cares for the sheep because they are his and he is committed to them. Unlike a hired hand who just looks after the sheep for money. Jesus isn't just doing it as a job. He loves us and he lays down his life for us. And in Colossians 1 verse 13 it says, For he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness, brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves. And so if that's not something to celebrate as we go into this new year, I don't know what is. 
as we have revisited this Christmas story over these last few weeks, it has really had, has given me a fresh perspective on life. That we do have so much to be grateful for and thankful for and that it is this season that really is a big deal and should be celebrated. And so I hope some of these things have encouraged you today. Be encouraged by the shepherds. They were just ordinary people, just like all of us. And God can use ordinary things for extraordinary purposes. Take those little things in your life that you seem as ordinary and use them with God's power and blessing upon to affect those around you and to bless others. And for those of us with children and young families and older families, be creative and continue to expose these lovely children that we have to wonderful things that God has created and given to us to enjoy and to use and to create and to, to bless others with. So bless you and a happy new year and thanks for listening. Great talk. Thanks for that, Sean. It was really good and uh, is a great part of the Christmas story and the, the lives of the shepherds and how we can be encouraged by the fact that God works in our day to day in the ordinary we can be ordinary people doing ordinary things, but when we put trust in God and have an openness to him in our lives, he can do extraordinary things in and through us. So be encouraged this year in 2021 that we can look forward to God's um, hand and work in our lives. And it takes a little bit of trust, a little bit of hope and a little bit of perseverance. And... Um, Let's look forward to what God has in store for us this year. Pray that you and your families would have a great year, that you would be blessed. And I'll just close in prayer. Yes, so we thank you for your love, for the ordinary person, Lord, that each person you want to know and love in fullness, Lord. And we find ourselves here today looking at the days ahead and trusting in you, Lord. And we thank you for that. We are open to you, Lord. We open our hearts to you and our lives to you. We ask that our experience of the day to day would be filled with you, filled with your love and with your compassion. I pray that you help us in our friendships, in our relationships, in our motives for life, Lord. May they be filled with your love and with your sight. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Have a great day and we'll catch you again soon. Bye.